I love the simplicity of land speed racing. The car only needs to do one thing really well, and in doing one thing, it does everything else really badly. The turning radius on this is so bad that to do a U-turn would require a 32 lane wide highway. The car really only needs four things, four wheels, an engine, me, and some tubes connecting it all together. Today, we're talking about the tubes. I know I just said that we're talking about the frame and the first thing I bring up is the wheels, but the wheels drive a lot of the design. Here's the deal. To make this thing go fast, it needs to be really small when you look at it from the front. This is called the frontal area, and the smaller, the better. As I said before, aside from the frame, there are really only three other things that need to be in this car. A powertrain, four wheels, and me. There are lots of different variations of wheels and powertrains, but there's only one variation of me. Well, there's the pre-pandemic Matt who had glasses and weighed about 20 pounds less, but we don't have a time machine, so there's only one variation of me. Lying down all the way with my head tilted forward gives a minimum frontal area, so this is a great place to start from. I suited up in all my gear and had a friend come over to 3D scan me lying down in a driving position. I did this for a few different heights. One was as low as I could go, really uncomfortably low. One was a little more realistic. And the third one would allow me to see over some taller front wheels. This is important to do with racing gear on. The helmet size is not insignificant and the crash tubes around the helmet need to have SFI approved padding on them. Also, my shoulder width is a little more complex than just measuring with the tape measure. For one, the SFI 15 fire suit has some thickness to it, and the way my shoulders sit is affected by how I'm lying down and how my arms move for steering and controls. When I posted this video, I had a range of responses from, it's too big, why is there so much room around your head, to, it's way too small, you won't be able to fit in there with your helmet. I can assure you that I do just barely fit with all the required gear, and I know this because I checked with lasers. There's nothing more accurate than lasers. My car is very short, just over two feet tall. There are people who have cars on the salt that are shorter than mine, but they're all running solid aluminum front wheels so they can see over them. I know what you're thinking, and no, I can't strap an oculus to my head and lie down flat with cameras pointing out of the front of the nose, sadly. I have to be able to see over the front wheels. I did some design around the different scans of me to find out how much bigger my car is with rubber land speed tires versus smaller solid aluminum wheels. There is a difference, but it's not very much. The minimum width that the car can be is my shoulder width plus the crash structure, and since I need actual tires in the rear, my minimum height is dictated by those. This means there's basically no way to get a frontal area smaller than this rectangle. So this part of the frame here where my head goes is the only part that changes with smaller aluminum wheels. It could get a little bit shorter than it is, but it gets uncomfortable and not very practical when you go below its current height. But to be sure, I drew up a couple of different car bodies, one of them for the smaller aluminum wheels and one for the larger rubber tires. I loaded them into AirShaper and did some back-to-back -back aerodynamic analyses. Aero analysis is one of those things that has really exploded over the last 20 years. You can see it on the front wings of formula cars getting more and more complex. In the last 10 years, the college kids have gone wild with it, and now it's getting to the point where your average YouTuber can try to optimize his land speed car. It's a pretty exciting time. How does aero analysis work? Colored lasers, I think. I took a class on CFD in grad school and have since forgotten everything. Aerodynamic analysis is one of those things that has lots of knobs and switches to turn, so it's really easy to get garbage output. You also need a lot of computing power to get any useful data. This is where AirShaper really helps. Full disclosure, AirShaper let me run these analyses at no cost. So far, I'm impressed with the product, and I'll be getting further into it later. At some point, I'll run an analysis on this bad boy. Anyway, the smaller diameter front wheel had the lowest drag. Its coefficient came out to be about 0.156, and the larger wheel body came out to be 0.174, with a similar difference in total drag force. There's also a smaller frontal area with the smaller wheels, so the total drag force is about 10% better. But looking at the body with the larger wheels, you can see the pressure profile on the front has a lot of really fast, low-pressure air on the sides and some flow up top that doesn't look very clean. So I did a super quick redesign of the nose and ran another simulation. The drag dropped about 6%, more than half the way to the smaller wheel body. I can tell there's more to be gained up here with some redesigns of the nose, so I decided to go with the rubber tires up front. They have more grip and they're more stable and apparently a lot easier to drive on, especially at El Mirage. I'll be diving into aerodynamics further in a future video. There's a lot to talk about there and a lot more analyses to be made. For now, we'll get back to the frame. And by back to the frame, I mean we'll start talking about the frame since we're four and a half minutes into this video about the frame and we haven't even mentioned it yet.
The main part of the frame is what I will call the safety structure. It is where I will be, and because of that, it is the most important part of the car. The rulebook has a fair amount of rules pertaining to this design, and also some drawings, and who doesn't love drawings? So designing this is pretty straightforward. I just followed the rules and wrapped a 1 and 5 8 inch tube frame around the scan of me. Once I had the safety structure designed, I sent off the CAD to Cal West Manufacturing in Fontana. This may be the best decision I've made all year, and I know you're saying it's only January, but I actually sent this off in November, so it was the best decision I made in 2021. Well, maybe the best decision of November of 2021. The point is, it was a great decision. I hadn't really gotten very far with the overall vehicle design, but I knew that the main safety structure needed to look like this, so I pulled the trigger. The tubes were all laser cut to fit together exactly. This is so much better than cutting and grinding or using a hole saw. I had these tubes tabbed and slotted so they would only go together the way they're designed to. In fact, these were all cut so accurately that this whole thing was basically self-jigging. I stuck it together, ratchet strapped it tightly, and checked all the angles and measurements, and it was perfect. I tack welded it into shape and checked for fitment. Fits great. Anyway, shout out to Cal West Manufacturing. They did an awesome job on these tubes and were great to work with. If you're doing something like this, I highly recommend getting your tubes laser cut. See this tube here? I notched this tube by hand. I uh, printed out some things and wrapped it around the tube. This took me more time to cut and tack weld in than it did for me to tack weld the entire rest of the frame. That's how much easier it is when you get laser cut tubes. Part of me wants to powder coat this frame to make it all nice and pretty, but every time I go to Bonneville or El Mirage and look at cars out there, somebody has a section of it where they've ground off the paint and welded or cut something new on there. So I have a feeling these vehicles change quite a bit. So I think I'm just gonna spray paint it. This is a super quick design and uh, I'm about 90% sure something major on it's gonna change. In fact, I've already changed something major. I changed the design of the top area, which is why I didn't have those laser cut in the first place. So uh, yeah, we'll just spray paint it and uh, that should be fine. I'm gonna do something else with this tube here. I might run it up to, uh, to the base of this. I don't like this ending just in the middle here. This really needs to go all the way down. Uh, and then this thing doesn't really do a lot. I originally did that because I didn't have this tube here. I had it back here, and this is the seat back angle. But I might throw this up to uh, connect with there, and then maybe another tube down to the bottom here. Uh, I also might just laser in a kind of thing there to just sort of make sure this thing is is uh, you know structurally connected to the to the rest of the structure, so it doesn't just bend this tube. These big open areas, I'll just close those out with some laser cut aluminum. I'll probably just weld in some tabs here and here, and then uh, screw in some panels that can be put in and removed. So that'll be all closed out, so I don't flop out of these little holes with my arms and legs while I'm tumbling down the salt and or dirt. I do need to go back and finish welding the rest of this, which will take forever. But first I'm gonna fine tune my welding skills on the rest of the frame. Most of the rest of the frame is square or rectangular tubing. Actually, I think all of the rest of the frame, except for laser cut parts. This makes it way easier to cut and way easier to get dimensionally accurate. And I didn't have this design done and I didn't wanna wait for the lead time of having it all laser cut. So I just designed it all square. It makes it easier to mount stuff too. Bought a new chop saw to cut all this up with. And uh, I love this thing, it's great. It does tend to chunk a lot of bits of metal up in your face. So you kinda of need a full face mask, which is great. Except when you're kind of going back and forth between welding and grinding on metal, you sometimes forget if you're wearing a welding mask or a grinding mask. Ow. This is not a welding helmet. So all the way up the front of the frame here, we have this box looking thing. This is for a tank of water. I'm not gonna use a radiator, your conventional air to water heat exchanger, because that would create a lot of drag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill this up with an aluminum box that has about seven and a half gallons of water. Then I'm gonna plumb two tubes forward and back through this tube here to a water to water heat exchanger in the rear. And then I'll have the scalding hot 180 degree coolant in the engine cycling through the engine back there. And then slightly cooler water coming up to the water tank up here. So that way if I wreck and this bursts, it doesn't spray 200 degree scalding hot water all over me. I'm putting this up front so I can move the center of mass forward. That'll give me a little more aerodynamic stability. And uh, might as well, might as well put it as far forward as possible. It's about 50 pounds. Front suspension goes up here. This guy will bolt on to those two bars there. And then I'll have a tire here and a tire here. And the suspension will kind of be in the middle there. Suspension and steering. But first I want to get the front suspension mounts 
and weld them in, and then I can use lasers to make sure it's level with the frame, square with the frame, and then I can tack weld it in and bolt it in. Some of you are looking at this engine bay and thinking that there's a lot of extra space back here. Am I missing some sort of second engine that goes up here? I did this for a few reasons, mostly because I know projects like this often run out of space. You always forget about stuff like fuel tanks and fire suppression systems and heat exchangers and possible future expansions of things like turbochargers and second engines. There's not really a drawback to having this extra length here. It helps push the center of pressure back behind the center of mass, which makes the car more aerodynamically stable. It also gives a longer wheelbase, which makes it more tire dynamically stable, mechanically stable. As I said before, I might move to another class in the future like electric, which will need battery space, or maybe I'll swap in a V8, who knows? Lots of room. Oh, we do aerobics in here. So many activities. I still need to add some cross braces at the bottom to triangulate it and probably a bolt-in cross brace or two on the top. This back part here will have the engine bolted in and that'll be stiff enough to where I probably won't need to triangulate any of that. I am going to add turnbuckle braces going from about here up to this roll hoop here and that'll allow me to add a little bit of preload if I need to. Um, that'll be a really nice triangulation to stiffen the back part of the frame. But if I get in it and it sags down, or if I put the motor in and it, it sags too much, I can preload those just a little bit just to get it back up. The triple uh, four guys did this on the electric vehicle when they put all the batteries in it and it sagged too much. They kind of just did the same thing. The reason I'm using a clevis mount at the top is because I don't want a failure of this tube to affect this tube. And I also don't want it to break and poke me in the back of the head. I'd rather the whole thing just buckle up and stay connected at either side. Once this thing is mostly welded together, I'm gonna have to get a couple of fat guys to come over and stand on the middle while we support back here and way up there. And we'll put some dial indicators along the side to see how much it's deflecting. Hopefully not too much, but uh, I can use that to figure out what kind of load factors are going to result in what kind of deflection. I don't expect to hit any 2G bumps out on the salt. In fact, if I do, I probably just ran over a guy. But I'd like to have it a little bit stiffer than it needs to be just to make sure everything stays in place and uh, to make sure the body doesn't crack or distort. <laughs> You might have noticed that these four tubes here go all the way from the front to the rear uninterrupted. I might use these to get air from the front of the vehicle to the engine. The highest pressure on this car is right at the center of the nose and the lowest pressure is right at the rear. So if I can put a giant air pump inside the car and pump air from the nose to the rear, I should get a noticeable aerodynamic benefit in theory. Hey wait, isn't an internal combustion engine a giant air pump? Oh, I'll just run the engine intake through these tubes and up to the front. I did the basic pressure drop equations on this, and it loses less pressure through these tubes than it gains at the front of the car, so it should be a net benefit for the engine too. To get the air out the back of the frame, I designed a junction from the rectangular tube to the bent round tube. Normally this would be difficult to make, but I have the power of lasers. Laser cut metal from my friends at Send Cut Send. I drew up four plates, each with the correct curved cutout, and then I just welded them together with the bent tubes in place. I added some little tabs so it would all kind of jig itself together. I designed this so the car can be separated right here. This is a bolted joint. I did this mostly because the car is 20 feet long and there will be a likely scenario in the future where my life will be easier if I have two 10 foot long half cars. I'm not sure what that scenario will be, but it'll probably be there. Might just be getting the car to the salt flats or maybe just getting it off this workbench. But in any case, this is where it becomes two. So I clamped the pieces together and clamped them around the rectangular tubing to weld them together. So this is gonna go on top and bottom here and bolt all the way through. And I don't want to I don't want to clamp it and then weld it up because then it's going to be, you know, zero tolerance. Plus this will have a little bit of paint on it. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of clearance in there by just wrapping some paper around it, which means this is probably going to catch on fire while I'm welding it, but uh, you know, it just makes it more exciting. Much better. Once they were tacked together, I temporarily welded these parts to the frame. Later, I will bolt them together through these bolt holes here, but first I want to make sure this is all straight. I need to be sure the front is in line with the rear of the frame. To do that, I'm going to use lasers. A laser level. There's a lot of lasers on this project. I set up this laser level on a tripod at the front of the frame, then I measured the distance from the frame to the laser, starting at the front and going all the way down to the back. I did this a few times and made a few adjustments and tack welded it together before double checking with the laser and realizing I needed to move it slightly. And repositioning it and rewelding it. I added a bit more weld between the center of the frame and the bent tubes. 
Then I drilled out the bolt holes and cut the tack welds to separate the front and the rear. Now I should be able to bolt it back together and have it all straight. This thing here, it looks like it was specifically engineered to be some sort of lightweight load transmitting structure. It's not, I just thought it looked cool. Bolted to the back of this will be the tail. The tail will hold the parachutes and will have the exhaust pipe plumbed out the back of the car. The tail here is sort of like the fins of a dart. When you throw a dart, the pointy end stays forward because the center of mass is up front and the aerodynamics is all happening out the back. This is the same with airplanes. That's why the stabilizers are all way out in the back. They stabilize the plane. That's why they're called stabilizers. This is essentially the vertical stabilizer for my car, that's why it's so long. I don't need a horizontal stabilizer because assuming everything goes well, I will only be moving in two dimensions, really just one. I might need to add a fin back here for more stability, I'd rather not do that, but I'd also rather not do this. So we'll actually do some engineering here and see what happens, but that comes later. Ooh.